now we're talking about pro wrestling. I want to go off on a little rant here on uh, on, on uh, Dana White. Not a rant, but just a, a correction. Uh, you know, Rollins hits him with the knee. He's yep. never hit anybody with that knee. He's pretty careful with it. Boy, he blasts John Cena. That nose it's gets bad. moved over. And if you say it's bad, it was bad because his nose was over here. <laughs> and uh, I'm, I'm, t- I'm touching the left side of my face. He kept going. Mm-hmm. And every time John Cena's ever been injured, he comes back early. The dude's a war machine. He's an absolute road warrior. So I give him a, a, so much credit. And he works his ass off every single night. But it, it's refreshing to see the blood. Uh, every now and then, every, every now and then, yeah, and you yeah. never want anybody to get hurt out there. But you know, if, if it's a little bit of a blade or something yeah, like yeah, that, yeah. that's always cool. You know, if, if the time is right and, and uh, the stakes are high enough for it. But it, it was funny before uh, UFC 190 the other night. Uh, Dana had put out some tweets that uh, whatever wrestling's fake yeah, yeah. in all capital letters, blah blah blah, it's fake. You know, and, and I think there was a lot of people from the uh, the professional wrestling community that really got upset at Dana, and they were sending me tweets. Hey, Steve, when are you going to say something to Dana White? You know, mm-hmm. you and the Rock, crickets, no one's saying nothing. Mm-hmm. Uh, and a couple of the guys barked back at him. Here's the deal. I know Dana uh, is from the world of boxing and MMA, but I know he respects the world of professional wrestling. I, I thought that was his way of saying it's a work. And yeah. Because there's a difference. But is it fake? It's predetermined. It's a work. So I don't think he meant disrespect to the business because I'll, I'll say this, Daniel. I'll take you. I'll take uh, John Jones. I'll take uh, the heavyweight champion of the world. I'll take the light. Uh, I'll take the uh, uh, bantamweight champion up. of the world. I'll take any of you guys that want to go on the road for two years mm-hmm. and be on the road for, for uh, 250 days and go through that grind mm-hmm. and – You'll never say fake, but what you will say, it's tough as hell. Let me t- let me tell you, I've got a friend named King Mo. He actually oh yeah, yeah. King Mo does house shows. Yeah, yeah. Before he was in TNA, said it's hard. I've actually taken a couple bumps. I've got a I've got a guy here. His name, he was the, his name was Bad News, the Brown Bomber, back in the eighties. Right. He has a wrestling school up in San Jose. Right. So I'll go. And in between fights, I threw a couple elbows off the top rope. You know, I'm a macho man guy, and it hurts. And I understand that it's it's predetermined. Right. The outcome is predetermined. Yes. But, but everything in between, taking yeah. bumps is not easy. No, because, because you don't people, always land perfectly flat. Last night, the guy did it. One guy did a, uh, I think it might have been Neville. He did a thing where he did a like a Frankenstein or backwards. The, he was behind the guy and he did a Frankenstein. The guy yeah. went back on the back of his neck. I was like, that did not feel good. Yeah. You know, so I'm not saying it's predetermined. This is very physical. And plus, the days on the road. Dude, it, that's the thing. It's nuts. It's time in the ring. Because, and it's always like, as I've said before, I'll make a real, a real quick point of it. You're living three lives in one body. You're living the life of a professional athlete because you're in the ring at a high intensity level every single night. On top of that, you're training in the gym to keep your body up, to keep your cardio up, and to keep your body together. Yes. Uh, and your ice in your body, you know, if, if you're injured. And then on top of that, you're a little bit of a rock star. Everybody yeah, wants to hang around with you. There's that night scene. Mm-hmm. When you when you get out of that ring, there's an adrenaline rush. You've got to kind of quail that down. And for me, it was a couple of beers, a little bit of whiskey. <laughs> and it turned into a lot. But, but then on the other hand, that, Daniel, you're a, tr- you're a truck driver. Because some of the guys in tour buses these days, but back in the day, you know, and by and large, for the most part, the guys these days in the ring, it's throw a bunch of guys in the car, we're down the road. We're talking about pro wrestling, so now you're living the life of a truck driver. So, you know, uh, fake, Dana, not, not so much a work, yes, and I'm not saying that to, to, to put Dana on blast because I love MA, I love yeah, the UFC, guy, yeah. and he's always treated me well and got me some great tickets when I got a chance to yeah, go yeah, see yeah. you fight in Vegas. So he's always taking care of me. But I think that he does respect the business. And, hell, one of his one of his uh, you know biggest draws came from the world of pro, yeah, pro wrestling. And now, uh, you know, and now CM Punk kind of relies yeah. on him. He's going to bring some people in. He'll bring people in. 